Six weeks ago, our next guest predicted that Apple shares would hit 600 bucks, and in short order, they did, rising to, rising to a record $636 on April 9th. Then, of course, they slumped today. They're back above 600 bucks, so we want to know where they're headed next. This man helps to manage $35 billion as portfolio manager of the Gamco Global Growth Fund and the Gamco Growth Fund. Apple is the largest holding in both funds. Howard Ward back here on the inside track. So, Howard, 600 bucks. You were right. It's been a bit of a rocky ride, but now they're, whatever, $614 this morning. You must feel good. Where do you think they're headed next? Well, I think $700 is now a very realistic and reasonable price target for this year. That's merely 13 times the estimate for 2013 earnings, which is around $54 a share. However, that number is going to rise. It's going to rise based on the strength of the numbers we had yesterday. So 13 times the old estimate for 2013 earnings of $54 gets you to $700. It's probably going to be north of $700. But I think $700 for Apple, that's sort of like a three-foot putt for Phil Mickelson. It's highly likely that they're going to make it. Now, you did not add to your Apple holdings in the first quarter when the stock had its slump, um, and recently, in fact. Why not? And, and who then would be adding to their Apple holdings if everyone is so invested, whether you're talking about institutional investors or retail investors? They all have a big chunk of Apple in their portfolio. Well, I think that in the world of large cap growth investing, you're right that most of us are pretty full with Apple. Apple's about 9% of the Gamco Growth Fund. We've owned it for a number of years, and it's done very well. However, I think when you talk about the value side of the equation, and here's a stock that's selling at the same multiple essentially as Walmart. Uh, it's selling at the same multiple or discount to the S&P 500, which has perhaps no earnings growth this year. So I think there's a value case to be made for, for Apple. And of course, there's the income. Now, the dividend for Apple, over $2 per share per quarter, starts getting paid next quarter. And so you're going to have a new, I think, some new investors buying the stock that need to have the dividend income. And, and then, there's, then there's the international market. Mm -hmm. The retail investor, sure, they own some Apple, but a lot of retail investors have been out of the market for the last three years. And so I do think there's Apple buyers out there for Apple stock. Howard, how about the guidance? Apple consistently lowballs the street. And the current guidance is no exception. They're only saying they're saying that sales will only be $34 billion next quarter. As Seven billion less than the first quarter. Right. Well, so as an investor, how do you approach this whole guidance question? What kind of a discount, at least, do you put you know, on Apple's discount? You know, you know, Eric, they're following the Microsoft model. From the, when Microsoft first became a public company, the stock rose 100-fold in a decade. And during that decade, they consistently under-promised and over-delivered. Apple's doing the same thing, and it's very smart. For the quarter they just reported, their guidance was $7 billion below the number they printed. So they are very conservative, but it's a smart thing to do. But let's talk about the strength of the underlying business. I want to make three major points on yesterday's report. First, the iPhone. It's over 50% of sales, over 70% of profits. This, it's 25% roughly of the smartphone market. The smartphone market grew 42% last quarter. The iPhone sales grew 88% last quarter. They're taking share. Clearly gaining share. Point number two, the iPad 3. The iPad 3, to use Apple's terms, is on fire. They are supply constrained on a global basis. To use their words, they can't make them fast enough. Point number three, China. China sales up five-fold over the last 12 months. 7.9 billion of the 39 billion they reported, 20% of sales, China. That means that Apple, within the large cap universe, is, I think, now the best single way for Americans that want to own domestic stocks to play the growth in China. And that is something to think about. Howard, thank you very much for joining us, as always. Howard Ward of Gamco saying that if you want to play China, no better bet than Apple.